My name is Paul Lockhead and I'm a researcher in the Clinical and Translational Epidemiology Unit at Massachusetts General Hospital. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to talk about our study entitled Association Between Proton Pump Inhibitor Use and Cognitive Function in Women. Proton pump inhibitors or PPIs are potent suppressive gastric acid secretion and as a result of their efficacy and tolerability they become the leading evidence-based therapy for acid-related upper GI disorders such as GERD and peptic ulcer disease. Despite the excellent short-term safety profile of PPIs, several observational analyses have reported associations between PPI use and a variety of adverse outcomes, including C. diff associated infection, pneumonia, fractures, chronic kidney disease, and stroke. In an analysis conducted using data from a German claims database, PPI use was associated with a 44% increase in the risk of dementia diagnosis. We hypothesized that if PPI use increases the risk of dementia, then PPI use should also be associated with poorer performance in tests of cognitive function. To test this hypothesis, we exploited the resources of the Nurses Health Study 2, a population-based nationwide prospective cohort of over 116,000 female nurses enrolled in 1989 and followed by biennial questionnaires to update information on health and lifestyle factors. Beginning in 2001, we specifically queried whether participants had regularly used PPIs or H2 receptor antagonists over the preceding two years, effectively capturing use of these medications over a 14-year period from 1999 to 2013. Between 2014 and 2016, a subgroup of approximately 14,000 NHS2 participants agreed to complete a self-administered computerised neuropsychologic test battery. The test battery comprised four separate tasks and we used the performance data from these tasks to generate three composite scores representing psychomotor speed and attention, learning and working memory and a score for overall cognition. We used linear regression models to derive estimates for mean score differences according to duration of PPI use. Our base model adjusted for age and surrogate measures of educational attainment while our fully adjusted model included multiple potential confounding factors such as chronic medical conditions, smoking, alcohol use and physical activity. Compared to never users, regular PPI users tended to be slightly older, had higher BMIs and poorer measures of educational performance. Regular PPI users were also more likely to have chronic medical conditions such as cardiovascular disease and diabetes and were more likely to use aspirin and antidepressants. We observed trends towards poorer test scores for all three cognitive domains in association with duration of PPI use in our base model. However, after comprehensive adjustment, duration of PPI use was only statistically significantly associated with psychomotor speed and attention, with an average score difference of 0.06 units associated with the longest duration of use category. This is actually quite a modest difference equivalent to around two years of age-associated cognitive change. Given that H2 receptor antagonists share indications with PPIs, we were interested in seeing whether similar associations existed for H2RA use. Interestingly, among individuals who had never regularly used PPIs, we observed statistically significant associations between duration of H2RA use and scores for learning and working memory and overall cognition, and the magnitudes of these associations were greater than those observed for PPIs. We therefore re-examined duration of PPI use excluding H2RA users and found no statistically significant associations with cognitive test scores. Our study benefits from the use of standardised validated tests of cognitive function applied to a population-based sample where there were available prospectively collected data on medication use and other important health and lifestyle factors. As with all observational analyses, we cannot exclude the possibility of residual or unmeasured confounding, particularly confounding by indication, and the fact that our study population was comprised of female nurses may influence the generalizability of our findings. In conclusion, we did not find a convincing association between duration of PPI use and cognitive function in a large cohort of middle-aged and older women. Our results suggest that long-term PPI use does not adversely impact cognitive function. As a secondary hypothesis, our findings for H2RA use should be interpreted with some caution and warrant replication. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I encourage you to read our full paper in Gastroenterology.